Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about Java pool, large pool, and stream pools. So, in the bigger picture, we have already discussed memory structure, and we we discussed share pool, DB buffer cache, redo, keep pool, and recycle pool. In this video, we are going to discuss about all these three pools together. There are nothing much to talk about on these three pools, so therefore, I just want to do one video for all these three pools together. So the first one is large pool. Okay. So if you remember from our last videos that we said that we have a DB buffer cache and then also we, we discuss about our shared pool. So these are basically small memories where we just you know allocate depending on say we want to get a block from the employee table. So these are very small amount maybe I can allocate 8 kilobyte or 16 kilobyte and so on right. So these are small allocations and then another thing, another thing is that whenever these buffers are getting allocated we don't really deallocate or free them. What, what happened like you know once this all the buffer cache is completely warmed up or completely filled then using the LRU algorithm and touch count we are going to make sure that we are going to rewrite that means there is no free concept here okay so these are the memory so that is how we we allocate this buffer cache and also the same way that we are going to do for the share pool however there are certain cases where we do not want to you know this kind of scenario is not going to fit okay so that is like you know we need to allocate using your C like malloc or C alloc and all those things and then after we finish that one we need to free them okay so that is the concept like you know why you know otherwise we can we can deal everything on the buffer cache itself but the reason we are going to do something in, in a new pool and that new pool is you know basically this this large pool the reason is that we want to allocate or deallocate the memory management in a different way and that is why uh, oracle gives you a new memory structure that's called large pool and this pool is essentially used for different things like say for example if you remember that in a shared server mode the so let's go here. So in case of a shared server mode, this UGA is going to reside in the UGA is going to reside here in the SGA, right? So this is what basically you know this picture whatever I'm drawing. This is assuming that this is a dedicated server mode, but in a shared server mode, we have PGA that's consist only the stack space, and the UGA is actually lies in the uh, SGA. So essentially, that UGA UGA in a shared mode in a shared server configuration is going to come from the large pool. So the large pool will allocate memory for the memory for the UGA requirement for the in, in case of a shared server mode. The number two is that we do backup and recovery for the backup for ARM and disk IO buffer in some cases. So to backup we need a tool called rman or recovery manager and for the rman disk io we need to allocate and you know using from the hip by using a malloc or c alloc and we need to free them so use uh, backup recovery and another thing is that whenever there is a parallel execution of sql statements then we need to have a allocation you know interprocess message uh, you know communication between two different processes in that case in order to allow for allocation of interprocess message buffer we need to have a memory that is coming from the large pool you know th in those cases buffer cache is not going to help so this is called parallel buffer so in these three conditions we are going to use large pool and the large pool is a, a you know, large pool underscore size is the parameter which is going to determine how big is your large pool. Just want to clarify one thing. So basically now we have something called large pool. So large pool does not mean that this is you know this size is bigger than the buffer cache. 
in in certain in, in most of the cases you may have a buffer cache is is much more bigger the total number of cache is much more bigger than the large pool but the only difference is that in buffer cache at a time i'm going to allocate very small amount of memory whereas in the large pool i'm going to i'm, I'm going to allocate a large segment of memory and second difference is that in buffer cache i'm not going to create but in large pool after i finish the work is going to free the uh, memory allocation so that is why i need large pool okay starting from oracle uh, 8.1.6 oracle started to inside oracle server they started to support java that means you have you have so far you probably have known about pl sql procedure but you also can write java stored procedure so java stored procedure basically you run this you know java you know java class inside the oracle database to 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 for this kind of you know the, for running this kind of java stored procedure we need a memory structure that is called java pool so inside the java pool we are going to allocate memory so that our java stored procedure can be run so remember in our last thing we discussed that in the share pool we have a area where we run this pl sql procedure but in case of your if, if you have a java store procedure you don't use the pl sql area of the share pool instead you are going to use another memory structure called java pool and the parameter is java underscore pool underscore size that is going to determine how big is your java pool starting from oracle 10g release 2 oracle introduced another product called streams so streams just want to give you an example and then then we're going to do what is a stream pool is so let's say for example you are here here is your oracle database so that means we have an instance and data files and all this thing then what you can do whenever something is going on in your database right somebody is doing an insert update and delete what you can do is like you now if say for example what happens you know you are you are writing you are using this thing and for whatever reason this you know wherever this thing stored got burned if that got burnt then you are going to lose completely all your data and all this thing right so like now in, in case just say just a disk crashed then by using the redo log file you can protect your disk you, you can you can get back the data but what happens if the complete that house wherever you store this server is going to is, is destroyed okay so to avoid that one what they do they use oracle database in tandem that means what I'm going to do. So here is my Oracle server. This is my production server. So let's say well, this is production database server. That means whenever I'm doing insert, something is happening here. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to replicate this server in another location. That means let's say this is in San Francisco. So here is another another place. Let's say this is somewhere in London. Or let's say this is Chicago. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I have another database in Chicago. I'm going to replicate. I'm going to replicate this production database in my Chicago database. To replicate that thing, we need I, basically that means when, whenever I'm going to do an insert, whenever the, whenever so basically this database, whenever some customer is doing an insert, then same insert should be rerun in this Chicago database. Or else, whatever data that been changed here, somehow that needs to be told to this Chicago, data, Chicago database so that they are going to change that. That is called replication. Okay, so to, to, to replicate this thing we need a Oracle product called streams. Either you need that or you can also use your own way so you know you can also you know you, you can rep and then also a lot of other tools are available in the market where you can replicate the database. But if you want to use Oracle's product then that product is called streams. So if we configure streams, then we need, in addition to all this other structure, we need a structure called stream pool. Okay. So that is what the stream pool does. Stream pools uses for you know like when I'm going to do the I'm going to stream, I'm going to use my stream pool, and stream pool will be used for that. So this is what all about your the remaining last three uh, pools. Okay, and then remember these pools are not managed by any LRU algorithm and so on. So again, the management of those things are different. So with the conclusion, what we have seen so far, 
that the memory structure is something like this this is governed by SGA and then they have their own way of managing that some of them are used by LRU somebody being done by malloc or cialloc and all this thing but as you see that there are is a huge complex thing right and then i'm just going i'm just showing you something you know not the everything if you want to do like large pool again is divided into multiple things right so how do you manage them so and then as you as you as you learn in the redo buffer for example it's very important to size it properly if you don't size it then it's all going to you know it's not going to be good so before oracle 10g and even 11g they used to size this thing manually but starting from oracle 10g release 2 and 11g onwards they improved this thing so that you just set one parameter that parameter is called sga underscore target if you set sga underscore target that means how much is the total memory that is going to be consumed for this thing then what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate, the oracle is going to calculate based upon your workload, it is going to calculate what are the sizes for each individual blocks, so each indiv individual cache. And then it's going to manage that one automatically and also like you know, during the runtime, if it detects that for whatever reason we are not really using the share pool so much, then maybe something is going to come to the, to the buffer, buffer cache. That means the resizing happens automatically. So therefore, you don't need to go about tuning the individual pieces. And believe me, if you want to tune the individual pieces, just make sure that you do a clear run. You know, you have you test it properly so that you know in in the like, your impact of your changes is going to act in a positive way, not in a negative way. That means you know it you may also happen that you may mess it up while you trying to tune it, trying to make it better, you may you may land up in a worst case scenario. So this is all about your memory structure and next set of videos we are going to talk about database processes.